Hello everyone, my name is Melissa Bujo and I'm going to be doing my second presentation covering numerical analysis. Um, in this presentation I'm going to be going a little more in depth over some root finding algorithms. We've gone over bisection method. Um, in our text from last semester there, uh, there was some more algorithms that I just figured I could share with you guys, so let's get started. So I included a brief recap um, just to help everyone refresh their memories on the definition of numerical analysis, what it is, uh, different types of methods. So uh, I believe I had this included last time. So the def definition of numerical analysis is a study of algorithms that use numerical methods in computer science as opposed to general symbolic manipulations for the problems of continuous mathematics. So we're basically using um, numerical techniques and just different strategies to give approximate but accurate results. Um, I believe I had these listed also in my last presentation. Some different types of methods could be a uh, bisection method, we've gone over that, polynomial interpolation, and also Gaussian elimination. So I wanted to go a little more in depth over chapter 4. Uh, this was uh, in our last text uh, whenever this was offered and it was called Real Zeros uh, and it just had different methods of helping find the roots. Um, I didn't include all of them uh, but I did just want to go over uh, two certain ones. So for a function f of x, the roots are the values of x for which f of x is zero. So some different types of methods or bisection method we've gone over. There's also a method called false position method and another one called modified false position method. These are the, the ones I'm, I'm going to go a little more in depth. So false position method, another name for it is regula falsi. It's very similar to the bisection method, um, but it does have a couple different steps that help give it its own name, its own different type of method. So our goal is still to decrease the interval, and again we're going to start with in interval A and B where F of A and F of B have opposite signs and we're going to get a better approximation whenever we find the point C comma zero where the secant line crosses the X axis so we're going to be using the secant line to help um, to approximate more accurate results uh, less iteration I think that's the main point of this method is just to help um, less help produce less iterations in the bisection method so to find the value C, it has its own formula. It's going to be the product of A and F of B minus the product of B and F of A over the difference between F of A and F of B. And then um, it's going to have certain conditions. So uh, depending on the value, uh, we, make, uh, we make adjustments before the next iteration. So, once we have C, if F of C equals zero, then we're done. We found the root and um, our job is done. If F of C and F of A have the same sign, then we're going to replace C with A. And then the same thing with F of B. If F of C and F of B have the same sign, then we're going to replace C with B. Um, and then just repeat as needed until you come close to that limit. Um, I've included a, a diagram right here. This is just to help show you um, like a graphical way of how we're doing it. Uh, this is from the text from last semester just to help give you a, you know, just a better idea. So uh, here is an example. This is, let me see, f of x is x to the third minus 2x minus 2 and we're given the interval uh, negative 2 and 2. So with that then we can see that in this example a is going to be negative 2 and B is 2. Then we're going to have to compute F of A. So F of A is equal to F of negative 2 since we just assigned A to negative 2. We're going to plug it into the formula or our given F of X and we're going to get negative 6. And then we're going to do the same thing with B. F of B is equal to F of 2. So plug in 2 into the F of X. We're going to get 2 and we see that negative 6 is negative and 2 is positive, we're good, uh, but f of a and f of b have opposite signs, so that's what we want. And we're going to compute c using the formula, um, like I stated before, whenever we plug in all those values, then we get 1. And remember, I think this is probably the most common mistake, is some people, they once they get 1, 
like once they get C then they start making the adjustments oh one is uh, greater than zero so we're gonna replace this with this but we need to remember that we need to find f of c that is our um, that is the, what's gonna help determine what adjustments need to be made before the next iteration so we have c equals one so then we're gonna compute f of c which is just the same thing as f of one we're going to plug one into the function and get negative three so that is the value that's going to help determine what adjustments need to be made. So we see that since f of c and f of a have the same sign, then we're going to replace c with a, which means for the next iteration, a is going to equal 1, and then b will equal 2. And we see that we've decreased the interval. Um, of course, you're going to do this multiple times to help find the root, but this is just this is the basic idea of this. So there's also a modified false position method. Um, just a little tweak in it, a little modification was added to the original false position method, um, but it is uh, significant enough to create its own name for it. So it helps eliminate the slow one-sided approach to the zero without the resulting large interval. Um, and the modification is basically dividing by two during each iteration of the computation. Um, that the function value at the end is kept. So it's basically the same process starting with the given interval a and b where f of a and f of b have opposite signs. Compute c using that formula that was given and then uh, the modification uh, or I should say the change in step right here this is where it differs from the original. You're going to compute f of c with f of a and there are again several conditions once they're met different adjustments are made um, so f of c and f of a if it's less than zero then we're going to replace b with c and replace f of b with f of c and we're going to replace f of a with f of a over two uh, again uh, if the computation of f of c and f of a equals zero then you're done you found your root um, you don't need to go any further but if f of c and f of a are greater than zero, then again, you need to do three things. You need to replace a with c, replace f of a with f of c, and replace f of b with f of b over two. Uh, so again, I provided a, another example, not too different from the last one, um, just a greater interval and just, just some small changes in the f of x. So we have f of x equals x cubed minus two x plus two with the interval negative 4 and 4 and we're going to use the same beginning process uh, we see that given that interval we know that a equals negative 4 and b equals 4 then we're going to compute f of a same thing as f of negative 4 uh, which is just plugging it into our given function and we get negative 54 then we're going to do the same thing with b f of b equals f of 4 plug 4 into the function get 58 then using the formula um, that's also from the original we're going to get c equals negative 0 0.143 then we'll see once we plug that value into the function then we get f of c which is 2.283 then we're going to uh, compute uh, f of c and f of a so we have our values 2.283 times negative 54 we get negative 123.282 Obviously, it's a very big negative number, so we know that it's less than zero. Then we make the following adjustments. We're going to replace B with C, replace F of B with F of C, and replace F of A with F of A over 2. And then, so for the next iteration, we, we do those adjustments, and we see that the new A, or sorry, this is the original, A doesn't change. So A equals negative 4. We see that the new B is 2.283 f of a is negative 27 and f of b is 2.283we see uh, there are different methods. There's Newton's method, secant method. Um, the main difference between all these algorithms is how the next guess is formed. So we saw with the original, um, but really the main difference between the original and the modified is uh, that one little step where it included a computation of f of c and f of a. 
And then with the modified, um, it changed F of A to F of A over 2, which just helped decrease the interval faster, um, save you some time. But then we see, too, that the Ryzen computers, they have helped make these problems much easier to solve um, and then save time with each iteration. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. Um, I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy. And thank you.